Everyone is always complaining about how every ritual entails a sacrifice upon success and a consequence upon failure. Well, hold up bitching a minute. I mean, come on. It's universal. First law of alchemy. Nothing can be gained without an equal or greater sacrifice. Freefold law and wiccanism. Do evil, it'll come back freefold. Do good, and it will come back freefold, etc., etc. So now that we have a genuine understanding, assuming whoever is reading this isn't a total dumbass and is capable of reading and comprehending the text written in the English language, let us discuss the ritual at hand. A lot of people know of rituals involving a chat or a game with Satan, but most of these involve the loss of your soul, with no chance of redemption regardless of how your meeting with the Prince of Darkness goes. These are the sort of rituals we hear throughout our childhood, from friends and reading novellas and internet stories that are simply known to be part of life. Everyone knows them, and many have tried them, much to their disappointment. There is a way around the inevitable desecration of your soul involving these type of rituals. However, there is not a way to avoid the potential for this sort of outcome. Just don't be a dumbass. This isn't the sort of thing you do when you're drunk to impress your friends. No need endangering multiple, infinitely lasting souls. It probably wouldn't work anyways. Satan doesn't often show up in the company of more than one person, unless he's feeling particularly rambunctious. He prefers to have private conversations. Better chance to fuck up your perception of reality that way. So with all this being said, and I'm assuming you're going to go through this regardless of the chances of death, losing your soul, and God only knows what else. I mean, it's the devil for God's sakes, and there's billions of horrid things that could happen. Let's get down to brass tacks. There isn't any long, lengthy list of things you need to perform this. Just a room with a wooden door as the main entrance and a bed, a cross or crucifix made of silver or wood preferably. Silver was what Judas betrayed Jesus for, and wood was what Christ was crucified on. Definitely not made of gold or any other precious metal, save silver as previously mentioned. Salt, a pin or knife, five taper candles, and matches, not a lighter. Those are the only required items. Optional items include offerings such as cigarettes or booze, a deck of cards if you fancy a game with Satan, and or a chair in the room for Satan to take a seat. Satan never turns down a smoke or a drink. If you don't wish to have any of those items, that's fine. Satan will probably have his own anyways. And if it's a game you're looking to play, he'll have the provisions for anything you wish to play, within reason anyways, and offer to share if you do not have your own. As for the chair, it is courteous to offer your guest a comfortable seat, and he may choose to keep better company if you're not a total dick to him. At night, optionally around midnight on a cloudy night, make a small pentacle of the five candles in front of the wooden door, whilst it is open in the room of your choosing containing a bed. The light should be on in the room for the moment. This pentacle needs to be just big enough to contain the cross or crucifix, and the point of it should be toward the doorway. Be sure that it is far enough back so that when you close the door, you won't knock a candle over. It never ceases to amaze me how this has been explicitly explained. If you knock a burning candle over and burn your house down, Satan will most likely refuse to show up and would rather be sitting comfortably on his throne laughing his ass off at your stupidity. If you decide to provide Satan a chair, set up behind the pentacle facing away from the door. After setting this little display up, circle the pentacle with salt and keep the rest of your salt on your person. Satan isn't a big fan of salt, and if things go down shit creek, it might be good to have some. Invite Satan in. There isn't a specific phrase to be said or anything of that sort. You could say anything from Satan, my good fellow, come on in, to Yo, Satan, my man, come chill with me. It is best to be hospitable with it, so if I were you, I'd say, Satan, you are 
welcome into this room for a chat. Or something to that effect. After this is said, wait a moment and place the cross or crucifix in an inverted position relative to you. Long end facing the door, short end facing you. And light the candles from the point to left to right to bottom left to bottom right. It is important not to move the candles at all from this point or disturb the ring of salt. And it is important that if at all possible to light them all up using one match. Once all the candles are lit, lick your fingers and press the match out with them. Turn the lights off. Place the spent match within the pentacle of candles. After this, take the pin or knife and prick the middle finger of your left hand. Put a drop of blood in the center of your inverted cross slash crucifix. Note that by doing this, you are offering yourself to Satan for the remainder of the night. He can do whatever the hell he wishes to do with you while both of you reside in the room. He cannot have your soul without your say though, and chances are he will not try to harm you unless provoked. He'd rather make friends of you. Anyways, back to the ritual. Be sure to face the door and close your eyes and focus your mind on your desire to speak with the devil. For the ritual to be successful, you have to have a true will, a very strong resolve to speak with El Diablo. After a few moments, open your eyes and blow the candles out. Stand and close the door and turn the lights on. If all has gone well thus far, Satan's in the room with you. He accepted your invitation and entered. As long as the door is closed, he cannot leave without you opening the door for him. That is, as long as you're still alive to do so. Thus, if he states that he wishes to leave, it'd be best to oblige. As for where in the room, he'll be seated in a chair, if you choose to provide one, or reclining on your bed. Turn slowly around after closing the door, and as soon as you see him, do not, under any circumstances, take your eyes off of him. As soon as he sees you, he'll be privy to any info about your personal life. He'll pretty much know every damn thing about you. And then some stuff you probably didn't even know about yourself. He generally appears different to everyone, seeing as how he can look however he wishes. Most likely, he'll choose something appealing to you. An attractive member of the opposite sex, perhaps or the same sex if you're into that. Or if you aren't particularly inclined to indulge in the lust of the flesh, he'll appear as a clean cut young man. You'll probably notice that regardless of his appearance, his eyes will be always nothing but burning embers in otherwise empty sockets. If not, he will probably offer you a drink or smoke and he'll have one himself. Once he lights up or swallows a drink, He'll ask why you called him. You will want to give him a straight answer. Don't stutter and don't hesitate. Don't worry though. After this, the formalities will be over and you can relax a bit. Satan has a sense of humor and will likely be cracking jokes and doing various parlor tricks. Fire at the tip of his fingers, turning electrical appliances on off from a distance, shape shifting, imitations, etc before you know it. Just keep him in your sight at all times and chat him up. Offering more smokes or drinks may make him stay longer if you have these at your disposal, but he will leave before daybreak regardless. The stakes for any game you play or the answers to any burning questions that you may have will most definitely be sinister. He might cut your thumbs off in return for telling you what really killed the dinosaurs, for instance. Or maybe kill a family member for a losing hand at poker. P.S. Playing poker with Satan? Bad idea. He doesn't lose. Ever. And you will pay the price for a game. If you ask for the answer to a question such as this, he'll state a price. And you're welcome to turn it down no strings attached. During the conversation between games or questions, 
he will tell you horrific things in a joking manner. Enter the, your dead aunt sucks cocks in hell remarks. Don't mind, most of it will be lies. If you don't pay for it, he's free to tell you whatever he likes, be it fact or fiction. He will never mention your soul. Bring it up, and he won't turn it down though. Despite this, there is a price for everything. It won't be your soul, so long as he doesn't offer. But there will be a price, rest assured. Don't piss him off, and you'll be fine, aside from that. He generally doesn't like being disturbed for no reason, though. So, if you bring him out, don't just say you wanted some company or some stupid shit. If you ever become uncomfortable, tell him it is time to leave. He must leave if you do so. Eventually, at some time before daylight, he'll say he has business to attend to elsewhere regardless. Open the door for him and close it behind him. Don't exit your room until you've disassembled your pentacle, however. Enjoy! Hope it was worth losing your thumbs to find out how exactly the dinosaurs really died.